This is the second lesson on the electromagnetic spectrum and this time we're focusing on uses and dangers. So just recapping quickly from last lesson, here is the electromagnetic spectrum. As we go towards the right hand side, towards radio waves, the wavelength gets longer and the frequency therefore decreases. As we go towards the left hand side, then we've got an increasing frequency and a shorter wavelength. And what's useful on this diagram is it also points out that as we go to the left hand side, where I have a higher frequency, I've also got an increasing energy. So you need to know the uses of the different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. If we start with this part of the electromagnetic spectrum, then starting on the right hand side, radio waves unsurprisingly carry radio and TV signals. The micro section there, which is where we go from infrared into radio, are used to transfer mobile phone signals and communicate with satellites. Now, radio waves being much longer in length um, are not much used to talk to satellites because they reflect off of the ionosphere. We met that in a previous lesson. So if I try to send a radio wave up to a satellite, it just reflects off the atmosphere back to the ground. That's really useful if we want to send radio signals over long distances, but no use if I want to send it to a satellite. Microwaves being a shorter wavelength can penetrate the ionosphere and go up to the satellite. So that's what we use for satellite communication. We also use them for mobile phone signals. If I move along to the infrared spectrum, infrared and light are both used in fiber optic cables. Now, fiber optic cables are the things that come out the back of the computer into the wall in school or in work because they connect computers to the network. They're also used as most of our telephone and internet broadband system across the country. If you send data through a fiber optic cable rather than a wire, you can get a lot more data a lot more quickly. And without fiber optic cables, we wouldn't have broadband, we'd still be on dial up back in the old days. So the key thing about the waves in this part of the electromagnetic spectrum is they're all used for communication of one kind or another, whether that's transferring data through fiber optic cables or data via your mobile phone or data via a satellite signal or data via radio and TV signals. They're all transferring information from one place to another. That information could be computer data or it could be an image on your television screen. Also in this section of the electromagnetic spectrum where the frequency is a little bit higher, we find the areas where cooking happens. Now we know microwaves are used to cook food in microwave ovens and of course the microwaves actually cause the water molecules to heat and so you cook the food from the inside out. That's why they're much quicker than conventional ovens. Now conventional ovens use infrared because remember infrared is heat energy. If we go back to the energy chapter in paper one, we learned that energy, uh, heat energy is transferred by conduction, convection and of course radiation, which is infrared waves. So down here at the other end of the electromagnetic spectrum, I'll start with UV rays. These are used in sunbeds. I think you probably know that. And ultraviolet is the part of the spectrum that burns the skin. Moving along to X-rays, again, no surprise. We know they're used to look at bones. So X-rays will pass through soft tissue, but are absorbed by bones. Going back to that keyword of using absorb. Um, if I shine X-rays through the body and put a photographic plate behind, then the shadow left is the bones because the X-rays are absorbed by the bones. Gamma rays are used in medical traces. Uh, we'll have a quick recap of those in a moment. But it means that at this end of the spectrum, we've got gamma and X-rays in particular are being used for medical diagnosis. So just going over medical traces briefly, you should have covered these in unit four when you looked at radioactivity for paper one. What we do is we take a radioisotope and then we put it into the body, usually attached to a particular kind of cell. So for example, I might inject technetium into the bloodstream or I might swallow barium if I'm looking at the gut. What happens then is that the radioisotope goes around the body either in the bloodstream or through the gut and it gives off gamma radiation, which we can then detect again using a photographic plate. So what you get is these very clear pictures, as you can see here, of the inside of the body. If I'm looking at the bloodstream, for example, if I get a lot of gamma radiation appearing in one place, it would suggest there's a blockage. 
So it might tell me I've got to look for a blood clot. Similarly, with the gut, it might tell me that there's a blockage somewhere within the gut that needs to be sorted out. So again, it's a very good tool for medical diagnosis. So a final use that we'll look at is that gamma rays are used to kill cancer cells and bacteria cells. I'm going to come back to this at the end of this lesson because this leads us nicely into understanding the dangers of parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Returning to the diagram we started with then, if we remember as we go towards the left hand side we are increasing the frequency and therefore also increasing the energy. So we would expect gamma rays to be more dangerous than radio waves because they have more energy and the more energy the wave has the more damage it can do. So down this end of the spectrum where we've got radio, microwaves and infrared waves, they're low energy and do very little damage if any. And if we think about it, infrared is heat energy. So unless you're going to climb inside your oven and switch it on and close the door and cook yourself, then you're unlikely to do a great deal of damage. And similarly with visible light, unless you stare directly at the sun, you're unlikely to do a lot of damage to yourself with visible light. Over at this end of the spectrum, on the other hand, the waves are high energy, which means that they can damage cells, in which case they cause cancer. Again, going back to unit four, we learned that it can make changes to the DNA of the cell so it grows abnormally and that's what causes tumours. Or, of course, it can kill the cell outright. So coming down to the other end of the spectrum, the higher the frequency, so looking at gamma, for example, being the highest frequency, then the higher the energy and the more damage caused. It would also be true that the higher the dose, the more damage caused. So a high dose of X-rays would do more damage than a lower dose of X-rays, for example. If we look at UV first, then that's the one which is the lowest energy of those three. So it doesn't have enough energy generally to penetrate our skin. So any damage it does is to our skin. And that's why ultraviolet causes skin cancer. X-rays, on the other hand, are more energetic and pass through soft tissues. So they don't tend to do damage to the skin on the way through, but they can be absorbed by high density tissues, including bone, which means that if they're absorbed and their energy is absorbed, they could do damage. So maybe causing cancers. Gamma rays can pass through everything. So again, if the, as they pass through, they could cause damage. They may even be absorbed if they're low energy and that can cause cancer or kill cells outright. Basically, as we go from ultraviolet to gamma, we've got more energy. You can penetrate deeper into the body and therefore cause slightly different problems. So from skin cancer right into cancers in the inside of the body or killing cells or so causing cell death. So when might killing cells be useful? Well, one use is the use of gamma rays to kill cancer cells. This is called radiotherapy as opposed to chemotherapy, where we're using drugs to kill a cancer. They can also be used to kill bacteria cells, and that's particularly useful for sterilising medical equipment or food. Now, medical equipment always had to be sterilised using heat. So you'd get a big oven called an autoclave, put your equipment in it, cook it, a really high temperature to get rid of the bacteria and then it will be sterile and you could use it. The problem is that limits what you can make things out of in terms of hospital equipment, mostly to forms of glass or to metal. However, using gamma rays means that you can now sterilise things that are made of plastic because you're not heating them up. Even better than that, you can sterilise them while they're inside the packet because gamma rays can go through the packet. They penetrate the plastic outside casing. So you sterilise your syringe while it's sitting in the packaging and the packaging stays there. So bacteria can't fall onto the syringe after the sterilisation process.